Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's talk is gonna be on how to survive the holidays, how to be healthy, how to keep your paleo lifestyle, your paleo template, your healthy diet going throughout the holidays. So let's dig in. We're gonna go over a couple different strategies on optimizing and staving off cravings by stabilizing your blood sugar, how to use exercise as a means to do damage control on maybe the extra sugar we may consume, Again, certain principles that we can follow so we set ourselves up to succeed, not fail. Also, if you're drinking alcohol, how we can bypass some of the negative effects of alcohol and also supplements for the holidays. All right, let's dig in. So first things first, I put paleo slash healthy because paleo is just, it's a big trendy term out there and it means really eating the way we evolved, eating foods that are more evolutionary evolutionarily adaptable, right? Cutting out grains, cutting out legumes, um, cutting out maybe dairy outside with the exception of butter. Some people are a little bit more firmer on some things. So it's just kind of a way of eating where we're optimizing nutrient density, anti-inflammatory foods, and low toxin foods. So just kind of keep that in mind. We can use paleo and healthy as interchangeable words here. But again, stabilizing blood sugar is really important. So when you eat a meal, right? We have, we have this imaginary blood sugar zone, right? This is the healthy blood sugar zone where cravings are good and we're not stimulating our adrenals. When we're in this zone, this is our adrenals. And when we're above, this is our pancreas. All right, we have adrenals down here and blood sugar. Um, and blood sugar in the middle and adrenals down below and pancreas up top. So you can see when our blood sugar is fluctuating, I'll just do red to make it pertinent here, you're gonna see our blood sugar when it's in this nice stable zone, we're in a really good place. We're not relying too much on our adrenals and not relying too much on our pancreas. When our blood sugar starts to fluctuate because we're eating too much sugar, carbohydrate, or even refined grains, you can see we go into the adrenal zone and into the pancreas zone, and when we do that, insulin has to increase and cortisol has to increase. So you can see cortisol here and insulin here. This puts stress on our blood sugar handling system. Our adrenals and pancreas puts more stress on our body and can compromise our immune system. And in the holiday time, with lower vitamin D and around people who are more frequently sick or immunocompromised, you don't want to get sick. So this will help keep your immune system strong, but also starve off cravings, because each time you dip here, this is where cravings actually happen as well. Cravings actually happen here. So if we can avoid the craving dips, you're gonna be able to keep your willpower much more intact this holiday season. You know, enjoy yourself and not go too crazy. All right, so next step, exercise and timing. So a couple things with exercise that's very powerful is exercise is a powerful growth hormone stimulator. Growth hormone helps you put on muscle, it helps you burn fat, really good things. The next piece exercise does, it helps you deplete glycogen or storage sugar. So imagine this being your muscle belly. This is your muscle belly. This is your liver. These are big storage sites for sugar or carbohydrate or glucose. So your muscle's gonna hold, let's say on average, about 300 grams of carbs. Your liver about 70, okay? It's the decent average there. When we deplete the muscle, what we're doing is we're depleting it, depleting the carbohydrate, right? Depleting the sugar, the glucose, Glucose goes down, so then when we eat more carbohydrates over here from our meal, that can fill it back up, and it's like a sponge, right? So the goal is if we can put in here with some of our junky eating maybe, or less junky eating, if we could have the muscle depleted over here, we can use it to put more of the carbohydrate that we'd be eating from our holiday meals. So in here is our holiday meals, maybe some extra carbohydrate, extra sugar and such, but if we deplete the muscle with the right kinds of exercise, this is an extra reservoir for that holiday food, all right? We can do the same thing with the liver as well, but you can see the muscle is a much bigger source. Now this is important because when we, when the muscle and the liver start getting full, guess where that holiday meal starts going? It starts going over to the fat cell, and this is our fat cell right here. I'll draw an F in it. When this gets full, all of that carbohydrate goes into the fat cell and the fat cell grows. This is why the average person gains 10, 15 pounds during the holiday. We want to avoid that. So again, keep the muscle depleted with the right kinds of exercise. High intensity resistance training is going to be great. Um, and 
resistance training with weights and such. So some kind of interval resistant training type of thing will be the best way to deplete your muscle of glycogen so you can take on that extra food with the carbohydrate and put it in your muscle instead of your tummy. Okay, good little school of thought there. All right, next, good, better, best principle. So I'm gonna give people a couple of scenarios here. Good, better, best. Let's say you have regular apple pie. Next one, we may have gluten-free apple pie. And then the other one may be a more healthier paleo apple pie that uses pecans, coconut, and maybe uh, macadamia nuts as kind of the crust. So you could have, I'll put paleo apple pie. So you can see here, we have three different options, good, better, best. If we can choose the best out of all of these, that's gonna set us up for better success. So try to do this with everything that you're eating. How can you choose something that's better than the other options. So the more options you can give yourself, you can choose the, 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 the good, better, or best. Now here, this is the best. Imagine here if the apple pie was not, wasn't on the table here, what's better? Well, better would be the gluten-free apple pie. And again, if we had no option at all, let's say this and this are ruled out, then hey, we may choose the good option. So do your best, don't kill yourself, but just know though, if you're very gluten sensitive or if you have an autoimmune condition and you're working with a functional medicine doctor because you're having issues, you really want to choose for the better and best option. So set yourself up success. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So if you're going to the holidays or going to a friend's house or family's house, try to set yourself up so you have some control over at least a dessert that you can bring maybe. Maybe you bring some coconut ice cream instead of some dairy-based ice cream. And then you can make sure some of the sides in these holiday meals are gonna be acceptable. Most sides are gonna consist of a meat and some vegetables. You know, you may wanna sub out some of the, the stuffing or you may wanna sub out some of the gravy. There are some good, healthier options there, but make sure you at least have a few options to choose from and always follow the good, better, best principle. Aim for best, right? Go for better, and if you have to, go for good. But just remember, if you're autoimmune or you have a health issue, you always wanna shoot for the best. So alcohol, what to do if you drink alcohol? So alcohol is one of these things that gets converted to sugar. Don't forget that alcohol goes to sugar. So what does that mean? Remember the muscle here I showed you up there? So it's better to consume alcohol, number one, after a meal, okay, after a meal. If you do it before a meal, the blood sugar zone that we talked about above, we're gonna be doing this. Just like that, right? Lots of stress here and here. So we wanna be consuming it after a meal. That's number one, okay? Number two, try to choose healthier kinds of alcohol. Yes, I know, healthy kinds of alcohol. It is possible. So I make a lot of my alcohol drinks when I do consume alcohol with like a ginger kombucha and a vodka type of mix, kind of like a, my Dr. J's uh, Paleo Moscow Mule, or I'll do like a NorCal Margarita where you're doing half a lime with a shot of you know, high quality like Tito's vodka and maybe some carbonated water or uh, carbonated sparkling mineral water. So you get, some, you get some bubbles, you get some minerals, you get a clean alcohol without gluten in it, and maybe if you add in the kombucha, you're gonna get some extra B vitamins, some probiotics, and some extra antioxidants in the kombucha. So a lot of good options you can do with that. So healthy alcohol options. So I'll put C, Dr. J site for the uh, healthy Moscow mule. That's my favorite. Now, if you're not gonna make your own drink, it's always better choose a, a good, clean, dry champagne or a Prosecco or a Brut or Cava. These are all sparkling wines. The drier, the better, that means the less sugar. I find that these don't give me headaches and I just feel much better with that buzz. Try to avoid the red wines, try to avoid beer, try to avoid a lot of mixed drinks with added sugar. Try the mixed drinks that I mentioned first, if you can. The next step down would be a good quality or good dry white wine or sparkling wine. And then some of the healthier mixed drinks that involve clean vodka, obviously gluten-free is gonna be the way to go. And again, choosing the right stuff in it. I like the kombucha as my mixer because of all the additional nutrients. 
And again, what to do supplements for the holidays. I'm gonna dove that into the alcohol piece because that's, it really ties in beautifully there. But some of the supplements that you can do, let's get us a little space here on the board, is you can do activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is very powerful because it'll bind up any toxins, especially in the alcohol. I mean, gosh, if you go to an emergency room these days and you OD on alcohol, they'll give you the charcoal drink right there in the ER. I've seen it happen before. That's a, a story for another time. So activated charcoal. The next one here would be vitamin C. High dose vitamin C can be very, very powerful. Next thing after that are sulfur amino acids. Sulfur amino acids and or glutathione can be powerful because it can rev up your detox pathways. Again, if you're under a lot of stress and you're getting exposed to bad foods, eating more sugar, your detox pathways will definitely put into overload. So activated charcoal, vitamin C, sulfur aminos are great. If you're eating a lot of foods maybe you're not used to, like a lot of gluten-free flours and such, that may put a lot of stress on your gut. So a couple of things you may want to think about adding in there if you need be your HCL, enzymes, and probiotics. So HCL to help break down the extra food you may be eating, even if it's good food, you may eat more of it because heck, it's like once a year, twice a year kind of thing with Thanksgiving and the holidays. So HCL to help break down that extra protein. Enzymes to really help break down any extra sugar and or foods coming in. You're just gonna feel better after that meal so you don't have that brick sitting in your stomach. And probiotics can serve a couple of purposes. One, it can help your tummy just feel good in general. So instead of having that palliative like bloat feeling, it may help reduce some of that bloat. And also just really keep your tummy healthy because a lot of your immune system is in your tummy, right? 70 to 80% of it. So if we're getting exposed to more stressors, having a good healthy immune response will be key, but also it'll just keep your tummy feeling better than, than not. So in conclusion here, try to do as many of these things as possible. If you're feeling overwhelmed and you're like, wow, Dr. J gave me a lot of things to think about here, try to choose one, if not two, okay? Good, better, and best is always a pretty easy one off the bat. And then stabilizing your blood sugar would be the next for me. And then some of the exercise pieces can be easy. I mean, just a, a five to 20 minute Tabata or resistance training circuit can really deplete those muscles and allow the muscle and all the sugar to go into the muscle and not affect your blood sugar and your adrenals. So I hope this helped. If you're conf confused, click down below. We'll have this transcribed and put into a blog post as well so you can read it. And if you need any more help, and you're feeling a little confused and you want some help navigating it, or you have some health challenges yourself, you wanna look at here come the new year, click on screen and schedule a consult here with myself. Again, subscribe if you're enjoying the videos and give us a thumbs up if you like it. Thanks, happy holidays.